Hey there, Luma. It's Denise from LumaHat.com, and this time I'm going to show you how to make these sweet, cute bunnies you know more as peeps. But first, let me tell you what you're going to need. A 24-peg round loom, 30 yards of yarn, three safety eyes, a pair of scissors, yarn needle, and an optional stitch marker. Now let's draw string cast on 12 pegs and I've marked off the first one so you could see what I'm doing. I count off 12 pegs and on the other side I mark that peg 12. Now I'm going to get a single strand of worsted weight yarn. I'm going to secure it to the anchor peg using a simple knot. You could use a slip knot if you're more comfortable and I'm doing this side these 12 if you're wanting to do the other 12 first doesn't matter either way that's fine you're going to go behind peg one in front of two behind peg three in front of four behind five you're going to continue doing that zigzag motion with your uh, working yarn until you get to peg 12 at peg 12 now we're going to turn around we're going in the opposite direction make sure you don't cross over your working yarn you're going to take that yarn when you turn around and you're just going to place it loosely over the next few pegs. And you'll notice that some of them have two loops and some only have one loop. Like for instance, peg 12 where um, we started, it only has one loop. Then this peg 11 has two. So that's where you're going to start off. Knit off. You take that bottom loop over the top and you knit off. And you're going to basically knit off every other peg. Those are the ones that have the two loops. And so of the 12 loops, you're going to knit off six of those. So you're knitting off um, half of the loops, right? And you could see here that I've done basically half of the loops. All right, that is the cast on. You're done. That peg one only has one loop. So you're done with the cast on and you're ready for row one where you're gonna knit 11 pegs. So again, we're gonna turn around because we're knitting flat and you're gonna take the working yarn from behind peg one and cross over because this time I do want you to cross over and you're going to lay the working yarn over the existing loop on peg two. Then with your hook, you're gonna take the bottom loop over the top and you're going to knit off. So we're using the U-wrap version of the knit stitch. And for that, you half wrap your pegs, take the bottom loop over the top and you knit off. That's how you do the U-wrap. So you're gonna to continue to knit because you need to do 11 pegs for this row, for row one. Once you're done knitting all your pegs, you knit off peg 12. That means that you're done with row one and now you're ready to do rows two through 15 where you're gonna knit all 12 pegs. So again, you're gonna turn around and you see that I did not skip that peg. I'm not skipping any pegs. I'm going to knit all 12 of these pegs that I cast on and I'm gonna continue to go back and forth knitting flat until I have 15 rows in total. And one more thing, don't forget to take the knot off the anchor peg after a few rows. Once you're done with those 15 rows, then you're gonna take the working yarn and stretch it to about four pegs, more or less, and cut the working yarn. Then you're just gonna place it behind, like in inside the knitting loom, and don't worry about it. Just let it sit there. We're gonna come back to it in a little bit. Bring now the yarn back to the front and take your working yarn again. And you're going to secure that yarn to your anchor peg. Once again, I'm doing a simple knot. You could do a slip knot if that's more comfortable for you. And just like before, we're going to drawstring cast on those last 12 pegs. So zigzag, 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 in and out, in and out, in and out, till you get to that last peg. And then you're turning around, lay the yarn loosely over a few pegs and knit off those pegs that have 
two loops so remember just like before every other peg and that first one does not have a loop right it only has one so you turn around and now we're going in the opposite direction we're doing the same thing you need to knit this time you're going to knit 11 pegs and then next after those 11 you're going to knit 15 rows of 12 pegs so same thing just on the other side once you're done knitting those 15 rows you're knitting off peg 12 you should be on the back side of the loom and you now have the old string sitting on the other side and the new string you're not going to cut this side you're going to connect the two sides and you're going to do that by taking those two strands of yarn and you're going to tie them together so you see that mine it, the new one is still long the old one is short and then I'm just going to make one knot sometimes I make two but this time I'm just going to make one and then I'm going to take those two strands of yarn and I'm going to finish this row so now that I've done that that I've made the knot and connected I'm now knitting gonna start knitting in the round and if you look back at that middle section you'll see that it's connected there's not a space there anymore so I'm gonna finish this row we're going to call this row row 16. So when you knit off that last peg, the one with the flower on it, the one that I put the peg on, which was peg one, you finish row 16 and you're ready to knit rows 17 through 49. You're now knitting in the round. So bring the working yarn from that first peg to the last peg and knit off and when you do that you've connected those two sides and now you're continuously knitting in a circle in the round and you're going to do that until you have 49 rows in total now as i'm finishing that first row when i go to the back i have those two pegs that are doubled up no problem just knit them off when you're done knitting all your rows then you're ready for the hacked drawstring cast off of those 24 pegs. Now grab the working yarn and you're going to wrap the loom one full time and then an extra three or four pegs. Get your scissors and cut the working yarn. By the way, I wanted to show you on my scissors I use what's called a scissor fob. It's right here. I have a pattern for it and it holds my needle that I'm gonna use with the project and it's super convenient. I'll put a link to this uh, pattern in the description. And uh, it has these cute little uh, beads at the end and it keeps my scissors, these small scissors always available and my needle always available with my scissors. I use this every day and I love it. All right, now back to the project. That was a small commercial that I just kind of sneaked in. Okay. So you got to take your working yarn and you get your hook on that first peg from the bottom. You're going to scoop up the working yarn and feed it completely through that loop. Then you take the working yarn and put it behind the next peg. Bring it back in front under the existing loop. You're going to from the top scoop up that working yarn and feed it through. Make sure you don't miss any pegs, okay? Again, you go behind the next peg in front of the one that follows. From the top, scoop up your working yarn and feed it completely through. Continue to do this. You're basically doing this every other one. Now, I wanted to show you this, that um, you can put it in front, right? Instead of putting the working yarn behind that peg that you're skipping, because you're skipping every other peg, you can put it in front, but I'm going to show you what happens when you do that. Now, when you're done feeding it through every other peg, um, I want you to pay attention to where my stitch marker is, right? That's not where I did first. I started here on peg 24. That's where I started. So take the working yarn again to peg 24 and feed the yarn through. So that peg, you fed the yarn through it twice. 
Now leave it alone for now. You're gonna go to the next one where you fed the yarn through and take the loop off the peg. So every loop that had yarn fed through it, take it off. And what I want you to notice is that when I put the loop in front of the peg that I'm skipping, you'll see that it resists me taking the loops off the next one, right? It kind of like, like stays on and I have to take the extra time to take that loop off the peg that I uh, skipped before I can take it off the other one where I fed the yarn through. I hope that makes sense. That's why it's better to put the yarn behind the pegs that you're skipping. Then remove the loops off the pegs where you fed the yarn through, finishing with that first one where you fed it twice. Now when you look at the loom, you should see that every other loop is still on the pegs. Now here is the second round, which is my personal hack. I'm gonna get a scrap piece of yarn. I had some left over from a previous package uh, project, but it is exactly the same yarn. And what you wanna make sure is that it can go around the loom one full time. Better if there is more than one uh, full circle on your loom and then attach it to the anchor peg. And then you're gonna take that working yarn and you're gonna go behind that first peg, which is now empty because you took the loop off. You already worked that peg. And then put it under the existing loop on the next one. And from the top, you're going to scoop up and feed that working yarn completely through that um, loop. And then remember not to put it in front of the empty pegs, right? You want that working yarn behind the empty pegs because remember, it's gonna be much easier for you to uh, remove the loops. And this one was left over from the last round. Um, you can always just pull on the uh, initial working yarn to get those out of your way so they're, they're not messing with you. And then it'll when you pull on that last working on it will kind of gather those a little and they'll get out of your way and then just keep going behind the empty pegs in front of the ones that still have a loop scoop up and feed the working yarn through those loops make sure you don't leave any if you leave one you're going to have a big problem the other thing i want to uh, let you know if for some reason you run out of yarn you don't have enough of that working yarn just take off some of the loops not the first one you don't touch that one any of the other loops that you have fed the yarn through, you can take them off the peg and that's gonna allow you, once you pull on that working yarn, it's gonna allow you um, more yarn. You can do that on the first shot too. You take some of the ones that you've done, that you've worked on, and then pull on the working yarn and it like gives you extra yarn. Again, don't forget to make sure that you've put yarn through all of your loops this is super important um it's a nightmare if you don't all right so once you've removed all those loops including that first one make sure that you take the knot off the anchor peg so that your work will be free of the knitting loom and now um, I suggest that you take that last uh, strand of yarn that you did the second row and that you make a knot on it because you want to distinguish that set from the other and you want to keep them together. You don't have to do this, but I assure you, you'll be glad you did. Okay, so you have that first one that's going to be a bottom and you'll see when you go to close, there's two layers. So put your loom aside, you'll get it for your next project. And now you're going to stretch those stitches. Stretching the stitches is super important because you could see the difference. Look, these are two sides and you can clearly see the difference between the side where you stretch the stitches and when you did it, they look totally, totally different, right? These look like ladders and there's like a distance, and then these look like they came together and they look like little Vs. So make sure that your whole project has been stretched so that your stitches look appropriately. You see how they even curl when they're not stretched? That's because you use the U-wrap version of the knit stitch. It's still, no matter what stitch you use, it's best that you stretch those stitches. 
So now your little guy should look like some really long torso uh, pants with really short legs. But actually, what looks like little short legs, those are the ears. And then this other end is the bottom, which you want nice and flat, which is why you have a two layer cast off. And this was the last layer that's going to go on the top. And then this is the first one that you did pull on that cast on because you want to start closing and you want those loops to gather and start closing. You see that some of them are not going to um, participate too well. Just pull on them a little bit and they will start to close. You don't want to close completely because you want to put these strands of yarn inside, uh, you know, into kind of hide them so then you can cut them so close it a little I kind of overdid it here because again like I said you want to take this uh, long strand of yarn and you want to put it inside of the bunny so find that yarn and pull it in and then you're going to uh, completely close from the inside. So that was your first layer of cast off. Here's the second one. And like I said, this is why you want to distinguish them. Because first, you want to start with the first layer, which was the first one you did. And then leave the second layer for uh, the second uh, yarn that you close. And then just pull on them. And uh, this makes for a nice flatter top. These, this works really good on hats as well. This is called the hacked drawstring cast off. And so you pull inside and I'm sorry, I kind of went off camera. I, I do that a lot. My setup is kind of different right now and I'm having a hard time with that. But I think you see the idea, right? It will start to close really well because you've basically uh, cast off half the, the, uh, stitches the first shot and then the other half the second shot you, you get what i'm saying so just pull on them until it's completely closed and once you feel like you've done that you've closed both layers really nice and you have a nice flat top you can then make uh, a knot if you want to or not if you don't want to and you'll be able to cut those uh, extra that leftover yarn and use those strands for something else don't throw them away because you will have a use for um, especially one of them to distinguish the head from the rest of the body so I make a knot just one and you don't really need to do a lot of them cut the extra leftover yarn and then that's it your bottom of your bunny is done and you see how nice and flat it looks, right? This is a great cast off, like I said, for anything like hats and socks and a lot of other things. All right, so that's done. Next assembly is required. If you're gonna use safety eyes, you need three six millimeter safety eyes, two for the eyes and one for the nose. And you're going to need your polyfill. Uh, if you're going to use store-bought po polyfill, you need anywhere between uh, 14 and 16 grams. I like to use these food scales uh, to know how much is that 14 to 16 grams. And as you see, um, that's what I have here. By the way, you can also use leftover scrap yarn or whatever you like to fill your uh, stuffed animals with. I use this most of the time. But before I stuff the animal first, um, I wanted to show you this one where the eyes have already been put on and the bunny is already stuffed. And you see that I have mine placed at about um, a little more than two and a half inches from the tip of the ear. But you need to consider that this bunny is already stuffed. And so it might be a little different. But just to get a range, because I like the way uh, those are positioned, so even though this one's empty, I'm going to go uh, and mark about, again, a little over two and a half and put the safety eyes in so I can see where I want them. Plus, remember, safety eyes have that back cap. And so you, you can't put them if you've already closed up your bunny. So uh, position them where you want. That way you can look at it before you put the cap on because 
those caps are really hard. Find the middle and the middle is going to help you know where to put um, the little nose. So this is my middle and I put the eyes first because of course the nose is going to go lower. And like I said, I try to make sure it's right in the middle. And so once I, I have them uh, where I want them, then um, in your case, you could go ahead and put the, the cap on. I, uh, I'm going to fill it first to see if I like where they're at because it is going to look different once the polyfill is in than when you're looking at your bunny flat. It's, it's going to change the position. So I more or less know where I want them. I took them out. You can put the little cap on. Uh, just remember that when you put the cap on these safety eyes, they're super hard to take off. And once you've uh, put the body in, then try to shape the little bunny so that it looks like a bunny. Don't just stuff it and, and like you're done. Try to shape your bunny so that he looks correct. So now um, I see what my bunny looks like. I put my eyes back in uh, as well as the the nose. And by the way, you can embroider the eyes and nose or you can even use a little piece of black uh, fabric or you can use some little tiny pom-poms. Okay, so this is how you put that cap on a safety eyes for those of you that have never used them. This is how you can cap them. And if you want to feel a little more secure about them, you can add a little bit of glue hot glue gun in the back before you put the cap on and then forget it it's like it's never ever going to come off they're really hard to come off either way but a little bit of glue um, might make you feel a little better all right so my eyes and nose are on and and uh they're stuffed up to the body now i pull on my drawstrings to close in uh, the ears on the tips. Remember that that was the cast on. So you pull on them to kind of close them in. So that it makes it easier to add the polyfill now to the ears. You have um, on the body. And I like mine a little stuff. If you don't like yours too stuff, that's okay. And if you feel that you see too much of your polyfill. Uh, and you want to do two strands when you knit the bunny, you can do that too. I feel comfortable with this one strand of yarn that I knitted my, my bunny with. Now I get my needle, which is nice and handy on my uh, scissor fob. And I thread one of the strands from one of the bunny ears. And then I go to the top to that very tip. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna shape the, the bunny ears round on the top and so I bring that strand and I come through those cast on loops on the top they're your very top of the ears I feed that through and when you pull on it you see that the ears start to come together and then you bring those two sides together and you're going to go from side to side from one side to the next um, and then close it one more time so you take the the strand of yarn and you go around all of those uh, cast on loops to make sure that your ears are shaped round and now you're going to come downward so you want it to look like a v so you bring the two sides together and then you're going to do like a sort of like a uh i forget what this is called i think it's called a kitchener uh, ah, I don't remember what it's called right this minute. So I'm sorry about that. Uh, so we're going to sew from one side to the next. You grab one loop from one side and then go over to the loop on the next side. And then you go from going from one side to the other is that you're going to go upward. So you don't you don't grab both. You grab that one one loop from each side. So you know that there's a little V on each side. So the ones that are closest to each other, you're gonna go from one side to the other and then up, up to the next, the next one, right? So I'm here, I'm gonna go from side to side 
and then up to the next one and then to the side. And you see how when they're brought together, they basically disappear. So continue going all the way to the bottom and that you'll see right here in the middle, you have these loose uh, strings on both sides. So what you wanna do is reinforce that. So you're gonna bring your, your needle down to the bottom and you're gonna bring them to the side and you want to uh, make sure that you feed the needle through those two, two um, like loose stitches. So go ahead and thread your needle with the strand. And then from one side, try to go through those loose strings to the other side to bring it together. And again, I'm sorry that I kind of went off camera, but you want to get to the ones that look okay. So if you see here, I'm going through like four loops from one end to the other, and then loosely put your, put your yarn through. You don't want to do it tightly because if you do it tightly, they kind of um, crunch together and then you can tell that you did that. So you want to do it nice and loosely so that it doesn't look crunched and you can't really tell. And I'm really so sorry that, that I kind of went off camera, but here you see what I did. I went from one end to the other to... Um, like reinforce it because it looked loose and it looks yucky and you want to clean that up really nicely and just just feeding the yarn through those loose loops tightens it up then you go to the other side to the other uh, bunny ear and you do the same thing that you did before you're going to put the working yarn through those top cast on loops and close up the ear and bring the two sides together so you can sew it closed once you reach the bottom of that ear, you're ready to close the middle. But before I get too far on this video, I want to stop and thank Carol Maple from Promise Learning ATL, Penny Pitchard, Barbara Ledger, Lori Shaw, and Bob Urquhart. On behalf of all those folks that stopped to thank me for these closed captioning, this is thanks to these folks and we all thank you guys big time. All right, so now we're coming to that middle and I can't stress it enough that you need to do this loosely because it can get really funky and ugly. So you're bringing those two sides in the middle together and you wanna make sure that um, you don't leave this open. It just isn't going to look good and that you can just continue to reinforce it until you feel that your fabric looks good. And then you can take with that needle, take that leftover yarn and feed it through and come out the other side. And then you're going to take that little strand of yarn and if you want, you can pull on it just a little and then with your scissors, cut it off. And it basically disappears and it's now inside of um, your bunny. It just disappears. So you do the same with the other one. Just take the needle, feed it through and, um, and you can cut it. It's always better to pull on it a little bit before you cut. Cause that kind of like kicks it back in. See, I didn't, I didn't do it really good last time. So it sticks out a little, I'll take care of that later. All right. Get one of your strand of yarn that you had that left over. And what we're going to do is right where the head meets the body. You're going to take that strand of yarn and put it around your bunny and then take it and tighten it really nice until you see that crease. So nice and tight. If you don't want too much distinct, distinction, then don't do it as tight. And uh, make sure that you've, you've uh, shaped your bunny nice. You could do that by rolling the body a little and pinching it here and there until you get the shape that you want. And then put the uh, strand of yarn where you want it. And again, like I said, I like to kind of pull mine a bit tight I got a little carried away here. That happens sometimes. Um, and then uh, once you have it as tight as you want, it looks the way you want it, uh, then you need to uh, make another knot. 
so that it will stay in place. And if you want to, you can make another one. And then just like before, I'm going to take my needle and uh, hide that inside the bunny. And then you just continue to shape the bunny until it looks exactly the way you want your bunny to look. You can do little pinches and little pushes here and there and, uh, and shape him. Continue to shape him until he looks the way you want. And personally, I'm going to put a little blush on mine. And then I'm going to make like 20 of them all in different colors. Because I get kind of crazy when I really like a project. And this one's just way too cute to me. I hope you really like it. I hope you guys will make a whole lot of them. And more importantly, I hope that you will give some of these away in love with your looms because that's why we're here. And if you buy the written pattern at lumahead.store, you'll get these tags. Now let me show you how to weave in the ends. And while you watch me, don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss anything and share the video because it helps me a lot.